One of the greatest things about me is that I love motor racing and I love games. It's been that way since I was young, in arcades at six year old, playing the likes of Super Hang On, Pole Position 2 and Super Monaco Grand Prix. How times change. This new feature for my channel is about revisiting the old racing games that I remember. This is Racing Revival. Now today, what I'm looking at is the arcades. They waned in popularity in certain ways, though they did stick around until the early 2000s here in the West. In Japan, meanwhile, they still remain as popular as ever, and multi-story buildings still accommodate many cabinets. Now, talking about those arcade memories, I'm going to go back to one of my favourites. From the early 2000s, this is Outrun 2 SP. As a series, Outward is fondly remembered because in the early 1980s you got to drive a Ferrari Testarossa around without a care in the world as a lady cheered you on from the dry passenger seat. But since then, Sega had never really captured the magic. Turbo Outrun, Outrun 2019 and Outrunners all felt like poor sequels. But Outrun 2SP changes that. It goes back to what made the old game classic. High speed, high octane and multiple paths to choose. And they also mentioned to update the game in many ways, the first of which was to incorporate drifting. So instead of just constantly looking to shift down and up to make the corners, you now decide as to how wide you want to go, how long you hold the slide, and the controls are very, very fluid. But keeping in line with that modernization of what the classic was, familiar yet fresh, we only have to go to the actual music, where they revamped the original Holy Trinity of Splash Wave, Magical Sound Shower and Passing Breeze. Take a listen. As beautiful as they sound, they also incorporated two brand new tracks to this, which are very rocky numbers that really get the blood pumping. Risky Ride and Shiny World. Check these out. That being said, there is a dishonourable mention to two truly awful Europop numbers that are right out of Sonic R. Yeah, the less said about that really, the better. Still, moving on from the music, let's look at the other most important part of this, the actual cars you have available. Because unlike the original, you don't just have the Testarossa. The poster car was the Ferrari F50, but it's a rather average understeery car, despite the amount of colours you have available to use. However, if you want power and pace, the Enzo Ferrari is next up, but be wary, the rear end is very, very twitchy, only for experts. 
The 360 Spider, on the other hand, has similar speed, but is a lot more stable. And the F40, a little loose and a little lacking top speed, but very fun to drift in. As the Testarossa is a great all-round car, like it was in the 80s, well, the GTO 288 and the 512BB are both lacking in ultimate top speed, but good for control. The Dino 240 GTS, and meanwhile, along with the Daytona, are a little too slow to use. The GTO, though, is one of the best all-round cars to use in the game. So now that we know what cars are available in this game, and we've also heard the varying levels of awesome that this music has available on the soundtrack, let's get to the big thing that matters most, the way the game plays. This game is a classic arcade racing game. It's a cannonball run game. If you came here expecting this to be kind of like a Forza simulator or anything like a Formula One game, you are in the wrong place. This is old school arcade racing. And the levels reflect that. They go everywhere from nice sun-kissed beaches with palm trees. They go from ice caps to levels full of road trains to avoid and oil tankers. You've got beautiful picturesque mountains with gigantic trees and open lakes. You've got Aztec ruins which are fused with the mists of Scotland. And there's even a level in space. Yes, driving a Ferrari in space. Even if you're in a convertible, you can do that. Mental? Realistic? Hell no. Fun? Definitely. And that's what this game is to me. It's all about old school fun. And there's a lot of replay value in the OutRun mode, despite how short it is. If you play the standard mode, which is literally the old-fashioned 80s game Reborn, you have 15 levels and 5 different ways to reach them. At the end of each, there's a fork. Left or right, heads or tails, it's up to you. And you can do most runs in, if you're a real expert, in 4 minutes 30 le or less. There's also the 15 stage continuous version of this, where you start at the Sunkist beaches and you work all your way to New York. And you have to go through every single stage. An expert on that can do it in less than 14 minutes. So you think it's a really short game. But the replay value is, like many arcade games, bettering your scores, getting the best lines, best times, doing all the things and getting as many little achievements for yourself as possible. It's a great experience and a really fun game. It's definitely a, a real treat for those who can still get it. All the footage that I'm showing you here is taken from the actual Xbox 360 version of the game. I am aware that that's unfortunately no longer available for public download unless you bought it back in the day, because the license has expired. A real pity that, because one thing I love about this game is it's a great blast. It's one of those games you want to play in between for an hour or two and go back to something more serious later. Now the Outrun mode, as I said before, is the main crux of the game, but it's not the only film in the game you play. There's also the Heart Attack mode, and that's all about being able to react to demands on the fly and being able to really control your car. Said demands will come from your passenger who will ask you a various different level of tasks and they vary in their difficulty in many different ways. They can be anything from literally overtaking as many vehicles as possible, they can be about you not crashing, they can be about doing more specialist challenges which are really really tricky if you don't know what you're doing. So it's all about finding the right line. In many ways it's kind of like a scenario mode. When you're racing along and you're told you need to lap a track in a certain amount of time or you need to score so many points this is Outrun 2SP's version of that, except it being an arcade game can be a little wacky and crazy, to the point that sometimes it scrambles your brain at the challenges that they throw your way some of them are also extremely frustrating due to how difficult they are, but persevere with this mode and you can have a lot of fun with it and of course the ultimate holy grail in terms of achievements is actually in this game is the triple A heartbreaker achievement. To do this, you'd have to get a triple A ranks in all stages. I'll openly admit, I haven't done it. And I imagine that many of the viewers watching this video haven't either, because I'm pretty sure my heart was attacked by this game. 
The final mode that you've got available to you when playing OutRun 2 SP as well is the Time Attack mode. This is very much a case of you versus the clock. All traffic's out of the way, there's no interference from yourself. The only thing you will get is the ghost cars from previous lap times. It's a great way to learn the circuit, but at the same time, it's not something that's going to make you better because you won't have traffic to avoid. It's all about lighting up those record books and it's a good fun blast if you want to try and get yourself onto the Xbox Live boards if you've got the Xbox game or if you're playing it on the arcade you get the code so you can actually put it into the online arcade scoreboards. Time attack, quite bog standard and like the outrun mode you can also do the 15 stage continuous version. Though time attack mode does have one thing that the regular modes do not have the ability to use tuned cars. They're faster, but they understeer a bit more than the old ones, so it's a question of what your personal preference is. Overall, a fun mode, but a bit shallow. In conclusion then, Outrun 2 SP is actually a very fun game. It's not going to win any points in terms of the originality stakes, and it's certainly not going to make you think that you've brought an absolute magnum opus of a racing game. In many ways, this is a throwback to those classic arcade games and the likes of the early Need for Speeds. It's all about having fun, meet the models and beat them again as many times as you want get your highest scores and go as fast as you can. It's fast and it's fluid and if you can get access to the older console versions on the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation Portable, they actually have loads of very much expanded career modes on it with a lot more levels to play. The only problem is, a bit jerky and a bit slow, frame rates aren't anything special. If you really want the best experience, you need to seek out the original cabinets, especially if you can find the ones that move and adopt to your posture when you're driving. Also, there are a few out there where you can get four cabinets in a row to have four player out from. Not possible to my knowledge in any other medium at this time. That being said, it's fast, it's furious, and it's fun. It's Outrun 2 SP, and it's a fantastic little game. This has been Racing Revival, and I've been Swishbone. Thank you all very much for watching, and take care.